Materials used in this video are available from Jameco Electronics. Electronics aren't a whole lot of fun without electricity, which is pretty obvious, I guess. And that's why we've grown so fond of these guys. Wall warts, power bricks, whatever you want to call them, they fall under the general category of power supply. But the thing is, unless it's maybe a battery pack, a power supply doesn't actually supply the power. It usually just adapts or converts it. For example, the 120 volts I get from my wall socket over here can be adapted to a manageable 9 volts suitable for use with, say, a microcontroller board. But not every device is happy using 9 volts, of course. Take, for instance, my big old synth module here. It's designed to use positive and negative 15 volts. None of my available supplies can provide that kind of power. But that's not a problem. I can build one. This adjustable power supply kit will provide positive and negative voltage outputs, plus a connection to ground, of course. Each output can provide up to 15 volts and 750 milliamps of current, which will be more than enough juice to power my synth box. This is a linear regulated type supply. It connects an AC input voltage to the primary side of a transformer, which causes a lower level AC voltage to flow across the secondary side of the transformer. That alternating current's wave is then chopped in half by two rectifier diodes creating somewhat goofy looking positive and negative DC waves. A couple of large capacitors then smooth the bumps out a bit, making each DC signal suitable for use by an onboard voltage regulator. These regulators ensure each output maintains a smooth and steady DC voltage. Very nice. So this power supply runs directly off of a wall socket, aka main supply, aka line voltage. Whatever you call it, there's one important thing to remember. It can kill you. Yeah. Line voltage can be lethal, but so can a pocket knife if handled incorrectly, right? So you just have to be careful. Always ensure that you or anyone else who uses your project can't come in contact with any of the live traces or wires. A nice 
straightforward way to prevent that from happening is to cover your line voltage traces with electrical tape. This being an adjustable power supply, each output voltage is set using a potentiometer. So once I have them set at 15 volts, I suppose it's time for a little test run. Right, that all seems to be in order. The big old transformers used in these linear supplies make them really pretty heavy. But there are newer types of power supply designs, which are considerably lighter. Switched mode, or switching power supplies, like this one right here, work using pulse width modulation. Maybe you've heard of it. They toggle their higher input voltage on and off at a very fast rate in order to create a specific output voltage. Because they work at such high frequencies, they can use a much smaller and lighter transformer compared to linear supplies. And more importantly, they're a lot more efficient than linear supplies. They're also a lot more complex to design and build. My good old linear regulated supply will be just fine for a little noisemaker here. Well, I should be getting around to putting this thing in a proper case. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. Use it wisely. <laughs> The adjustable dual power supply kit is available at jameco.com.